I tested the chemistry and everything seems to be in range, so we could probably conclude that there's a lot of life in this stream. Well, not necessarily, because we measure chemistry and it represents this point in time, but we measure macroinvertebrates or stream bugs because that can represent the stream health over a longer period of time. Macroinvertebrates? What are those? Rolling. Who's rolling? What? <whistles> oh, um, macroinvertebrates are anything without a backbone that you can see with the naked eye. Some examples include, um, mayflies, stoneflies, caddisflies, and even me, a snail. Some other examples include aquatic worms and leeches. Are macroinvertebrates found in all streams? As a matter of fact, mm, no, they are not found in all streams. Some macroinvertebrates are very picky and cannot live in waters with any pollution. These are known as indicator species. So if you see certain picky bugs like stoneflies or mayflies in a stream, you know that the stream is healthy. Can you say macroinvertebrate three times fast? Macroinvertebrate, macroinvertebrate, macroinvertebrate. Am I a macroinvertebrate? As a matter of fact, you are a macroinvertebrate. And you are. <laughs> Delicious. If you lived in a stream, which one would you pick? This is Upcamera reporting live. Let's ask our resident trout what type of requirements they would like for their water. Well, we need cold water between 52 and 56 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's pretty chilly. What else? We need clean water. What do you mean by clean water? We mean no chlorination, no sedimentation, and a pH of around seven. We also need low levels of ammonia and nitrate. Oh, well that's interesting. What else do you need in your water? We need plenty of oxygen, just like you humans. We need a dissolved oxygen of greater than seven parts per million. And what type of things do you like to eat? We like to eat plenty of things. We like to eat mayflies, stoneflies, anything that really hatches in the water. We also eat things like ants, the occasional frog, and even leeches. <laughs> Whoa, big belly on you guys. Oh yeah, he's in there. Wait, can you pull him off and get some blues? Ooh, yeah. Oh, it's like a graphic. There it is. He wasn't on there enough yet, but you'd see his whole head, how he's sticking on to me. And can you tell us about the shelter in the water? Yeah, there's plenty of places that I like to stay. I like to stay near gravel, big boulders so I can hide from other fish, shallow pools, deeper pools, and stream baked vegetation, like trees, roots, and all kinds of other grasses. Well, you heard enough from our resident trout. That's all we have today, guys. Well, tune in tomorrow at 10 a.m.
Hey everybody, it's Bobby Hughes here, F Camera's Executive Director, and we're out here on Huntsville Creek doing a watershed assessment for the uh, Cold Water Heritage Plan uh, that we're developing for not only the Huntsville Creek, but the Upper and Lower Toby's Creek. Tell us more! So we have staff out here today and interns and volunteers that are out doing a biological assessment of the stream, bringing in some of the macro invertebrates and the bugs of the stream and doing an identification of them so that we can then determine the stream health. So uh, as you see here, we got a stream bio survey going on and all the staff are out here um, just below the lands of Hillside Farms and uh, play around in the stream a little bit, kick some rocks and uh, identify some of these bugs and uh, see what kind of fish food is out there. <laughs> hey, you want to hear a joke? Sure, go ahead. What do you call a fish with no eyes? What do you call a fish with no eyes? No I, F, I, F, Oh, no I. Oh, shh. Okay. <laughs> Bio surveys are done through kicking up rocks, disturbing the stream bottom, and collecting any debris in nets. It looks something like this. What kind of music do we listen to when we catch macros? I don't know, what? Something catchy. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we take the nets to shore and sort the bugs by what species they are. <laughs> reference material to identify what species an unknown macroinvertebrate is. Do you remember the name of this macro? That's right, it's a stonefly. What's your favorite macroinvertebrate? A crayfish. Why? Because it uses its tail to move quickly in water. Finally, we use a mathematical equation to determine the health of the stream. Why are macroinvertebrates useful? Tell the water quality if it's good or bad. Why is it important to know the water quality? To know if you could like catch fish in it and like stuff like that. Let's go look for some macro invertebrates. Look at the crayfish. It's cute. Crayfish are cute. I don't know put in the water where it belongs. We caught some crayfish and aquatic worms. Look at them move around. What does the water feel like? It feels super cold, even though it's summertime. What do you do with the aquatic life once you're done observing them? Let them free and in the wild. Now it's 
just open it and get me with the mouth. Peace out, child. Peace out, child. So the next time you're in a stream, pay attention to the critters hiding right under your feet. They can tell you a lot about the stream 